I want to hear you. What game did the devs abandon? Who is devs? Homeguard Games is a dev, bro. Okay. What game did Homeguard Games abandon? Search Sergey Titov. Sergey Titov is not the dev of the Homeguard Games. Sergey Titov is one of the investors, not the dev. There is a big difference in between investing in the game and being a developer of the game. Huge difference. When you're investing in something, you are guaranteeing with your money for the success of the certain product. If you're a developer, you're developing the game. That is the first thing. Sergey Titov is not the developer, it's one of the investors. It's literally what HomeGuard Studios said. Yes, I'm aware, at least I know that more than half of our team does not know Sergey Tito. His involvement comes through the game's fund, a VC fund that is in minority investor. That is a minority, so it means that it has a small fraction of his investment in Homeware games. So Sergey Tito is not a developer. That's the first thing. I was there. I do not need to read the articles. I do not have to watch somebody else's YouTube video. I do not have to ask chat. What do they think about certain things? Because I was there, you know? I was in War Z when it was War Z, okay? I, I was there. So here is the thing. I never ever felt scammed while playing uh, War Z, AKA infestation survival stories, never. I had fun. The game was being developed slowly, but it was being developed. Now, here is the thing. I'm going to say exactly the same thing that I said yesterday three times, but I'm going to repeat it again. When Daisy Standalone came out, it came out for 60 bucks or whatever the fuck, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, it doesn't matter. There was the alternative called War Z that was, in my honest, humble opinion, way better game with way better uh, mechanics and way better features and way more fun than Daisy. And it costed 30 bucks. War Z costed $30, and I had a fucking blast. Because of the wars, it had extraction kind of a system before the extraction system was even a thing. War Z was extraction looter shooter before the extraction looter shooter, where you had your global inventory, where you could kill the guy, fully loot him, run into the safe zone, and put everything in 100% safe environment. I fucking loved it. That's the game that sparked the, the, the love towards this type of a gameplay loop. I played for thousands of hours. Because of War Z, I heard about Summit, I heard about Zombie Barricades, I heard about Dakotas. Those are top three streamers that I was watching daily while I was playing War Z. Summit just quitted to be pro in uh, Counter-Strike. His main game, he was maining War Z. Go ask Summit, what does he think was War Z a scam or not? We all had fun in the game. They were releasing the new guns, they were releasing the new maps, they were fixing the shit up. It was not the best game ever. It had, it had shit ton of garbage, dog shit, but it was fun experience. With that said, I personally quitted War Z because it was infested by cheaters. And that's the reason why I quitted War Z. For the same reason why I quitted Tarkov because it's infested by cheaters. People do not even know the reason why War Z changed into the infestation survivor stories. It is not rebranding because of the negative rep, it is because of the trademark, copyright of the name, whatever the fuck. It was because of World War Z, I think, movie, or it was, it was something like that, something dumb. They could not use the name War Z, so they had to re rename their game because of the trademark, copyright, infringement, whatever the fuck. With that said, Sergei Titov made the new game called Romero's Aftermath. If you were owner of War Z, if you bought the game for 30 bucks, War Z, aka Infestation Survival Stories, you did not have to buy Romero's Aftermath. You got that game for free. He made a new game, completely new IP, completely new whatever, with the same mechanics, with the same fucking code, pretty much, right? It's a new, it was a new IP, and I did not have to buy the game. He was not milking the money out of my pocket for the new game that came out a little bit later, you know? It was just like a new page, new chapter, and you're getting it for free if you got worthy. If you did not got worthy, then, then yes, you had to pay it. So what exactly here is a scam? Please, what exactly 
is a scam here? What did Sergey did wrong in that kind of a maneuverability, dude? I see waivers development right now that people are sucking the developers, Cognit. So please, what exactly was a scam in their, in their situation? And by the way, I'm talking about the dev that is not even a dev of lit. There are countless videos. I'm not talking about countless videos. I'm asking you personally. I'm asking you because I was there. I was there, lived that, played that. I was maining those games before I was a streamer, before I was content creator. I don't have to read the articles or watch the YouTube videos to know what was happening. Do you, under do you understand? You also never felt... Nobody felt scammed for War Z. People that felt scammed for War Z are the same people that are complaining about Cyberpunk. Same people. It's, in it's insane to me. It's insane to me that people are, are so fucking coped out of their fucking mind. They're listening, whatever, whatever they read on the internet, they, they take that as a fact, as, a, as granted. Like, it's insane. Gorilla pointed it out really clearly, dude. When I'm talking shit about the game, people are complaining that I'm just hating. When I'm liking the game, people are complaining that I'm liking the game. Can you just unsubscribe, dude? Can you just unfollow and leave me alone? He's having fun, must be a shill and paid. He must be paid under the table by developer. Are you fucking out of your mind, dude? Do you know who I am? There is a lot of beautiful little happy bubbles on the internet. I don't think this is the right one. Go away. Holy shit. And that would be my L to you.